What went wrong? A lot went wrong. I left in the late 60s and didn't return till 1993 summer. But if, you, if I were to look at the time frame, what went wrong, one of the most important things that comes up is immediately in 71, Pakistan lost half of its, as a country, uh, East Pakistan, which is now Bangladesh. It became Bangladesh, yes. And then uh, uh, Bhutto came in and he had to look to the Arab world and the Gulf countries were coming up at that time and they were, you know, the oil was discovered and we were looking at redefining our, as a nation, mm -hmm. for ourselves. Then, you know, Bhutto was, was gone and then General Zia came. But I think, and then the Soviet invasion and U.S., Pakistan and Saudi Arabia aligning and fighting that war and bringing the Soviets down and the Cold War came down, the Berlin Wall came down and the United States left. And I think that was very well described in the recent Senate hearings by Secretary Clinton. And she very eloquently said that, you know, <clears throat> they helped to us to fight the war. And when the war was over, we left. And then we put sanctions on them. Is this, what it's, you, I'm sorry, go ahead, Muslim. What do you expect? So I think that the trust deficit started to erode. That's what you read my mind, this whole notion of a trust deficit. It all dates back to this notion that we haven't been, from, Pakistani, from Pakistan's point of view, we haven't been a good ally. We've come in when it's convenient, and we've left when it's convenient. Uh, are, are people willing to forgive and start anew? I'm sure. They have to. We, we have to turn a new page. And, uh, you know, turning a new page is, again, what I said earlier, that uh, how the Bush administration dealt with the then administration of Pakistan and how the Obama administration is dealing and how uh, Secretary Clinton has gone there and is dealing with the different segments of the people. And, you know, she's addressing many, many good things she should be applauded for, like energy, the energy needs of every Pakistani. We have eight hours to 16 hours of load shedding. And, you know, how can trade grow or how can people make a living? I mean, it's, it's absolutely pathetic. So she going there and, and addressing that, that we will help you to rebuild your energy needs. And, uh, you know, the hundreds of millions of dollars that are going to us that. The poverty alleviation, uh, helping the women NGOs, helping the students with higher education, and lots more will, will, will come about. This was the first visit. And I think it was, look, you're going to have people who are the naysayers, who, who are not going to like what is happening. But, you know, life goes on. Mm -hmm. And we have to move on. You know, the, uh, you and I uh, spoke by telephone once and met for the first time today for this interview. But in the brief encounters I've had with you already, I think it would be, you probably wouldn't correct me if I said you love America. You have a very positive association with America. You're very enthusiastic about America. Yet, the country of your birth, it, public opinion polling tells us that there are f a few countries, if it, there are any, on the planet where America is less popular than it is in Pakistan. So I, I'm, I'm guess, I mean, the question is sort of this. What do you know that your fellow Pakistanis don't know? Why do you have such a positive association with this country when many Pakistanis feel just the opposite? Tell us what perspective you've gained in, in your business, in your travels in the various countries you've lived in that have brought you to this conclusion that you view this as a positive place where that's not the case among many who were born in Pakistan? Well, I was very lucky. I, I stepped out of Pakistan when I was 17, 18, went to Italy. From there on, I moved on and visited Pakistan frequently after that and then lived in the Middle East. But what I did learn was that I came here in the 70s and I saw the American dream. I was in my early 20s. And, and I always knew that, you know, what the, what the administration has and what the people, the people in the United States are, 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 are wonderful people, warm and hospitable. Same as the people in Pakistan, they're warm and hospitable. 170 million people, they're very welcoming, very open. 
And, and it's that people-to-people -people contact that when you have, you, you begin to learn about the, the country as a real, what, are, what is the country all about, the fabric of the society in that country. And today I've come here uh, th almost three years ago out of choice because I've lived in many countries of the world and I feel that there is no perfect country, no perfect people, no perfect system. Right. But among the imperfects, the United States, for me at least, is, is the best. Mm. Tell us what you're working on looking forward. I, I, we briefly mentioned your philanthropic work. We didn't get into it in any detail. We have a few minutes left. Tell us about things that you're working on in future projects. Well, I haven't abandoned my country of birth and the country that I love very much. I still have an office there doing the philanthropic stuff. And we intend to increase that. But uh, in the interfaith part, which is very important to me, which I you know, grew up with tolerance, uh, we, we are hoping to do a lot more. We, we just, during the holy month of Ramadan, we did uh, uh, f fast to feed. Uh, it, was, it was a call by President Obama. And what we did was that we lined up, uh, we, we, we had the permission from the historic synagogue in Washington to have uh, the permission to open our fast and say our prayers there. And everybody was invited and everybody brought food for a Christian charity, which we also support here, the Salvation Army, mm -hmm. the great patrol that feeds the uh, poor in the, in the Washington area. Right, the homeless. Yeah. Yeah, the homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, our company does that and we're very proud of that. And so it was, it was an amazing, amazing uh, uh, feeling that to go to a synagogue, which I'd never been, and to see uh, a young man, a Muslim man stand up and give the, the call to prayer, the adhan, what we call, uh, on the bima with the menorahs in the back. And, 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 the, and the Muslims came and prayed there while the, the Christians put their scarf on and the Jewish and everybody was praying together, praying to the same God. And that was a, a defining moment for me. Those are, those are the moments that I live for. And, and it was, if I may add, I, I had a call just before that uh, from a Saudi friend of mine. And I said, look, I'm in a hurry. I have to go to open my fast. And he said, where are you opening it? And I said, I'm going to a synagogue. <laughs> and he said, what? You're, you're putting me on. And I said, no, I'm going to a synagogue to open my fast. So he was quiet. And then... All of a sudden, he said, you first elect a black man. Now you're going to a synagogue to open a fast. This can only happen in America. <laughs> well, on that optimistic note, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. G great to have you. Unfortunately, we're out of time. In addition to thanking Muslim Lakhani, we want to thank you for watching and ask for your feedback. So you can send comments and questions to us via email. The address is dialogue at wilsoncenter.org. We'd love to hear from you. Until then and until next week, for all of us at the Wilson Center and Dialogue, I'm John Molesky. Thanks for watching. Dialogue is a co-production of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars and MHZ Networks. Dialogue can be seen on the MHZ Worldview Channel, which is available to public TV stations nationwide. For more information, please visit www.mhznetworks.org.